नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन थर्टी इन अवर कोर्स ऑन ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट सो टुडे वी आर एग्जैक्टली मिड वे ऑफ अवर कोर्स द कोर्स इज अ ट्वेल्व वीक कोर्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू फिनिश अवर डिस्कशन फॉर द सिक्स वीक टूडे एंड वी विल बी फिनिशिंग थर्टी सेशन ऑफ अप्रॉक्सीमेटली हाफ एन आवर ईच एंड एज फार एज आई हैव सीन द डेटा आई हैव ऑलवेज एक्सीडेड द टाइम लिमिट ऑफ थर्टी मिनट्स Persistently, I have tried to explain that what are the various maybe aspects of the topics that we have covered, and with passion, when you speak, you just forget all the time limits. And I think last sessions were maybe forty, forty-two minutes each. But I feel that I have tried to explain the things in the most simplistic, most simpler. as well as most clear manner but still if there are few suggestions the suggestions are most welcome we are midway through the course and whatever feedback we get from the learners we try to incorporate that feedback in our next courses already we have rec recorded two courses under mooks scheme one of the course was run successfully on product design and development and another course was run successfully or is currently running under processing of polymers and polymer composite and this is a third course we are recording and whatever feedback we have got for the previous courses we have tried to incorporate that feedback in the current course so exactly midway i think i am uh, highlighting the passion behind recording these courses and today uh, we are going to discuss the some examples some numerical problem maybe one or two related to capacity planning so in the sixth week of our discussion our focus was on production planning and control and we are today in the fifth session of week 6 and in week 6 the very first session was focused on the objectives and functions of production planning and control in week 6 the second session was on process planning and the third session was on aggregate production planning and the fourth session was on capacity planning introduction and the basic objectives of capacity planning in the last session we finished at the economies of scale and dis economies of scale and there are definitely many things which we must understand that what is economies of scale what is the best operating level what happens when we are operating below the best operating level or maybe prior to the best operating level what happens when we use our capacity beyond the best operating level so the capacity can be utilized prior to the best operating level if you remember in the previous session we have seen an example of a hotel industry so 500 rooms was found out to be the best operating level so if we are using only 200 rooms we are under utilizing our capacity if we are using maybe 1000 maybe 500 rooms is the operating best operating level suppose we have 1000 rooms we may be over utilizing our uh, additional facilities for example suppose we have maximum utilization may be beyond 500 rooms there can be a condition of chaos the restaurant may not be able to service all the people staying in all the rooms sometimes our uh, hot water facility may not be able to serve all the guests staying in the rooms so there can be problems associated with the excessive utilization of the facility also similarly i i have talked about an example in which on the speed indicator in any vehicle we have uh, optimal speed if we go beyond that speed if suppose the overall the maximum speed marked on the speedometer is 200 km per hour but we usually do not drive at 200 km that is the maximum rated speed but if you go towards 180 190 190 it may not be the best operating level the safety may be one of the concerns but if we stick to the best operating level we will get the maximum results the fuel efficiency can be better safety can be better so there are maybe the rated capacity is always different from the utilized capacity so the rated can be higher but the actual utilization of the capacity may not be the maximum as we have seen a term called utilization rate so we have calculated the utilization rate also in the previous session 
in today today's session again i will focus slightly on what we where we left in the previous session on economies of scale and diseconomies of scale because i believed that i have not been able to explain the things properly so again i have taken an example today just we will try to have a overview of the best operating level because that is where the capacity is being utilized because we have understood what is capacity what is capacity planning and then we have tried to understand the best operating level and there we have seen one or two diagrams but today again we will try to understand stand the economies of scale and diseconomies of scale with the help of the diagram so you can see the economies of scale on your screen you can see the average unit cost of output or average unit cost 100 unit plant 200 unit plant 300 unit plant 400 unit plant so you can see that beyond 300 unit plant for this particular manufacturing facility the average unit cost has started to increase beyond 300 unit plant so the minimum average unit cost we are achieving at 300 unit plant only so why this happens we will try to understand the diseconomies of scale has started to take effect after the 300 unit plant so we why do this happens or why the rate there are two things to understand here first is why the average unit cost is reducing till 300 unit plant question number 1 question number 2 is why it has started to increase after the 300 unit plant so here the things to understand is the economies of scale and the diseconomies of scale now from the graph that is shown on your screen we can see that as the plant produces more products they gain experience in the best production methods and reduce their costs per unit so this is the cost per per unit or the price per unit and this is a total accumulated production of unit so as and as as and uh, with time as and when you produce more number of units you learn more about the process you learn more about optimization you learn more about the skills required to make that product you develop the skills required to make that product so from manpower point of view from experience point of view from optimization point of view we become better as a teacher maybe let me share this example with you when you are checking the answer scripts for the students the first 10 to 15 answer scripts may take more time as compared to the same number of answer scripts when you are checking towards the end of the class maybe you have 100 copies to check the first 15 may take much more time as compared to the last 15 why because while checking the answer script you develop that skill of reading uh, the answer script where to look in what type of answers the students have given also you memorize the num maximum number of marks for each, each question so the you develop that kind of an experience for checking the answer sheet so that is the economies of scale that you derive that the average time spent on checking the answer scripts keep on reducing similarly the cost per unit also reduces another point that i want to emphasize here is the concept of value engineering that we have covered in our week 2 in our co in our uh, topic of product design and development so over a period of time when you analyze the process when you analyze the materials when you analyze the design of the product you always Uh, think or you always propose to come up with new materials new processes new designs in order to improve the product so with passage of time the things have to improve and therefore we take advantage of the economies of scale because now we are using the best possible methods of production now economies of scale we have tried to again emphasize it costs less per unit to produce high levels of output one point must be taken into account high levels of output is not something which is linear so the cost per unit will not reduce linearly with high levels of output as we have seen as the volume is increasing to some extent the cost per unit is reducing so 
cost per unit is reducing but after the best operating level the cost per unit again starts to increase as we increase the volume of production so why do this happen why the cost per unit reduce with the increase in the level of output so it reduces because the fixed cost can be spread over a large number of units so suppose you have set up a factory you have procured the land you have bought the machines now this is related to the fixed cost uh, required for setting up of the industry or the factory now suppose you make only 100 components per month so the cost of setting up of the plant which includes the cost of the land and the cost of the machines that you have procured will only be spread over the 100 parts that you have made in a month but suppose you make 1 lakh parts in a month so the fixed cost that you have spent on machines and land will be spread now over 1, 000, 1 lakh parts that you have produced in that month so therefore when you increase the number of products that you are making the fixed costs are spread over a large number of products so it gets spread out so the cost comes down so production or operating costs do not increase linearly with output levels so production or operating costs do not increase linearly so that is there is a this is an established phenomenon why because you take advantage of the uh, maybe the discounts that are available you take advantage of purchasing the raw material in bulk and therefore the production cost do not increase linearly the same thing has been highlighted the quantity discounts are available for material purchases so if you buy suppose 10 parts you may have to pay rupees 2 per part but suppose you buy 20 parts the price may come down to 1 rupee 80 paisa so that is the quantity discount so when you are buying more num more volume of raw material you get some discount on quantity so that can be taken care of when you are producing more number of products and in order to take the advantage of economies of scale operating efficiency increases as workers gain experience which I have already highlighted so these are four important point which are responsible for reduction in the average input cost as the volume of production increases and thereby helping us in utilizing the economies of scale but after a best operating level the diseconomies of scale start to set in now how why do this occurs this is given here this occur above a certain level of output that we are terming as or that we are calling as the best operating level now why does this happen this happens because of the diseconomies of distribution diseconomies of bureaucracy diseconomies of confusion diseconomies of vulner vulnerability so if you see in totality i can say the chaos starts to set in we are not able to utilize our capacity properly we are not able to plan the things properly why because of the complexity in managing the operations and i think we have one example here the diseconomies of confusion if we see four processes we have to manage six linkages six processes 15 linkages eight processes 28 linkages so the complexity increases with the number of linkages between departments or processes the number of links between n nodes is a network is n into n minus 1 by 2 so this is the diseconomies of confusion so if you have to manage a large uh, variety of processes a large variety of product a large variety of skilled manpower so it becomes a difficult operation or difficult process and therefore we are not able to achieve our target of minimizing the average cost per unit and therefore beyond a particular operating level of capacity the things start to get out of hand and the average unit cost starts to increase so i think the overall objective of understanding this capacity utilization or capacity planning is that we must identify that what is the optimal capacity utilization that we must target where the average unit cost of product or the process or the service that we are going to 
may be study is minimized. So, we can uh, see if we have a service that we are providing, we are a service sector industry, we have may be 10 people working in for our company, we must identify that what is the exact number of this manpower that would help us to achieve the best operating level. If we are doing the analysis of machines, we must identify what is the exact number of machines that we must use in order to satisfy the demand and in order to operate at the best operating level. So, basically the purpose is to finalize the capacity that we are going to use. Now, let us see one example capacity utilization this uh, formula we have seen in the last class in the last session capacity utilization rate. So, the problem uh, statement goes like this during one week of production a plant produced 83 units of a product. Its historic best utilization was 120 units per week. So, it has produced 83 units in the current week, but initially in it when the plant was operating maybe to the best of its capacity, it has al also produced 120 units per week. Now, what is the plant's capacity utilization rate? So, the capacity utilization rate as we have seen as per the formula is capacity used divided by the best operating level. So, the best operating level here we take as 120 units per week. So, 83 units per week divided by the 120 units per week we get 0 0.69. So, approximately 70 percent is the capacity utilization rate. So, very simple example, simple mathematics only involved. But what information we can deduce from here. The decision making information that we can infer from this is that we have the capacity to even produce 120 units, but we are not able to optimize or we are not able to achieve the best operating level that can be possible or that is possible in the plant. So, we can try to see that how where we are lacking so that we can improve our efficiency effectiveness as well as the productivity. Now, uh, when we are doing capacity planning what all we must uh, focus on. So, determining the capacity requirements. Now, if we see we are at the fag end of our discussion on production planning and control. In the last session our focus was on uh, capacity planning the introductory part only and prior to that we have seen aggregate production planning. Now, suppose in aggregate production planning we see the regular time production is going to be this much units, the overtime production is going to be this much unit. Now, in overtime production suppose we are spending more money the cost of production is more because we have to pay more to the workers who are doing the overtime. So, we can see we can do a trade off that why not to install one or two more machines and, and employ one person more or one worker we can add so that the overtime we need not pay in the regular time only we are able to produce the products as as so as to meet the demand. So, such type of decisions we have to take. Now, adding two machines means that we are adding a capacity to our existing capacity. As we have seen that capacity is usually added in chunks. So, we are adding a capacity to uh, to overcome the overtime production and to focus on the regular time production only. So, determining the capacity requirements is one thing. So, th this will help us in planning our production in a more efficient manner. So, what is required? So, forecast of sales is required within each individual product line. Suppose the company is a multi brand, multi product company. So, it may be making five different types of products. So, for each product we must have a forecast. Then calculate the equipment and labor requirements to meet the forecast. If you go to the functions of production planning and control, there is a term called est routing and then estimating. Now, in estimating we have to estimate the machine requirement as per as per as as well as the labor requirement also to meet the forecast. So, first we need to forecast, then we need to understand how many machines, how many people are required to make the 
product in order to satisfy the demand and then project equipment and labor availability. So, that must also be known to us that what is the equipment available or how many uh, types of machines, numbers of machines that are available and what is the availability of the labor. Now, we have seen, we have calculated uh, machine requirement and a labor requirement, we have exact labor and machine requirement as per the current status, we can see what is the difference and that difference we will try to do, by, do with capacity planning. So, we will try to bridge that gap of difference by doing the capacity planning by utilizing our existing capacity as well as by adding the additional capacity. Now, capacity planning we can see three important considerations are there in capacity planning maintaining a system balance. In the ideal case the output of one stage is the exact input requirement for the next stage. So, we have to maintain that particular uh, sequence or that particular balance. Otherwise, what will happen if the output at one stage is much more than the input at the next stage, the line will be slow. So, we have to plan our capacity in such a way that the system balance is maintained, the line balance is maintained and the output of one stage is exactly equal to the input of the next stage. Then the frequency of capacity additions we have to see that there why because there are costs involved in adding of the capacity too frequently as well as too infrequently. So, we have to see that when and where we have to add a capacity in order to meet the demand. Then the external sources of capacity also needs to be uh, we can evaluate or they also needs to be explored I must say. So, it might be cheaper to outsource some of our production and if you remember in the session on aggregate production planning we have seen that outsourcing is also a very good production alternative to meet the demand. So, from capacity point of view we have to see that we have to manage our capacity in such a way that the system balance is maintained, the line balance is maintained. Secondly, we have to focus on the addition of the capacity wherever required and thirdly we have to ensure that how we can augment our capacity with the help of outsourcing some of the production to maybe our sister concerns or to the well established companies who are also in the same business. Now, some of you may be uh, wondering that why should we give a uh, production our uh, maybe uh, demand to some other company or uh, maybe that may not augur too well for the organization. But many times we see that whenever we go to buy a particular uh, product from a grocery store and if that grocery shop owner does not have that product, he will send his sales boy to some other shop to fetch that product for us. We could have also gone there, but there can be uh, maybe this uh, branding involved that if uh, maybe I am going to a particular grocery store, he may not like me as a customer to go to some other vendor. So, I will do it for that customer, maybe I have to get it done from some other source also without revealing to the customer that what was my source of production because I will be putting my brand on that particular product. So, there can be many uh, managerial or strategic decisions that the company have to so, there, therefore, sometime outsourcing is also a very good production alternative. So, we have to see what capacity we have to deliver to the demand and how we can augment our capacity internally as well as with the help of our outsourcing agents. Now, making capacity planning decisions, the three step procedure for making capacity planning decisions is as follows, identify the capacity requirements already we have seen in the previous slide, develop the capacity alternatives and I must address outsourcing is one important capacity alternative and then we have to evaluate the capacity alternatives. So, this is a very simple procedure for developing a plan to change the capacity. First, I will just read it for you. Determine project capacity requirements given a demand forecast. So, the input is a demand forecast that we have. So, we as per the demand forecast, we have to map that what capacity we have to meet that demand. We may be having additional capacity also. 
but that doesn't make a difference because if we have additional capacity demand is less no problem but in case where the demand is less but we have uh, may, sorry when the demand is more and our capacity is not able to meet that demand in that case we have to see that how to satisfy this demand formulate alternatives to meet future capacity requirements because we have the forecast of the demand so we have to formulate what alternatives we have at our disposal to satisfy this forecasted demand then evaluate the alternatives now we may have different alternatives but we have to evaluate them oh, why how we can evaluate them they can be evaluated based on economic factors costs revenues risks competition flexibility quality of the products organizational and managerial adjustment so there can be as i have told you that while going for outsourcing there can be number of factors that we have to take into account similarly these are the these are the criterion as mentioned in point number 3 on your screen here which will help us to evaluate these alternatives and to find out the best alternative for changing our capacity select the optimum alternative and implement the capacity development plan so in summary we can see that when we have to change the capacity what we need to do first we need to establish that what is the capacity requirement depending upon the demand forecast whether we have the capacity to meet that demand forecast suppose the answer is no then we have to look for alternatives that what are the other alternatives that we can explore suppose we have four five alternatives we have to evaluate those alternatives based on a number of uh, factors or we have based on a number of criterion and then we have to finally select the best alternative that goes well with the strategic policy or maybe the policies of the organization so friends let us take an example on the capacity planning and this is the last part of our session today so the problem statement is given here a manufacturer produces mustard in small and family sized plastic bottles with the following demand forecast so the for the four years the demand forecast is given and the products are two products one is small size plastic bottle and another one is a family sized plastic bottle for the manufacturer so the uh product is a mustard we can see here the four years demand forecast is available with us and in order to meet this demand forecast we have different types of machines available so three machines of 1 lakh units per year with a capacity of 1 lakh units per year is available for small bottles and two machines of 1 lakh 20000 units per year capacity are available for family sized bottles so two maybe we can say two types of machines are available for small size we have three machines for large size bottles we have two machines and the individual capacity is also mentioned so one resource is machine the other resource is man power that is also mentioned here for for operating the machines for making small size bottles or uh, we can say two operators are required per machine so total six operators are required and for running or for managing the machines used for making family sized bottle three operators per machines are required per machine are required and there are two machines so we can say that we have six people required to run the bottle uh, run the machines for making the family sized bottle so we have in nutshell three machines for making small sized bottle and two machines for making large sized bottle six people are required to run the small sized uh, the machines for small sized bottle and six people are required to run the machines used for making family sized bottle so that is the problem statement now demand is given to us so we have to map this demand with our capacity capacity is in terms of machines and the man power available at our disposal so we can say, calculate now that how much capacity is used and what are the machine and labor requirements so labor is available six people are available to run both types of machines but whether there 
utilization is happening properly, whether their services are being utilized properly that we can calculate mathematically. So, the uh, problem whatever was given in the form of sentences is summarized here. Machine capacity overall capacity is to make 3 lakh small size bottles per year. Similarly, 2 lakh 40 thousand bottles for family size bottles. So, maybe we have a capacity of 2 lakh 40 thousand for family size bottles, 3 lakh for small size bottles. Similarly, labor availability is 6 each for small size bottles also or for family size bottles also. Why? Because for small size bottles, two operators per machine are required and for large size bottles or family size bottle, three operators are required to operate the two machines. So, we have a labor availability of 6. Now, we can do these calculations on your screen. You can see we have taken an example of family size only. So, the percentage capacity used is 47.92 percent. Why? Because we can see the demand for year 1 is 115 thousand. So, we can say 1 lakh 15 thousand is the demand forecast and we have a capacity of 2 lakh 40 thousand because there are two machines available with us with a capacity of 1 lakh 20 thousand each. So, 2 lakh 40 thousand is the overall capacity for making family sized bottles and the demand is less it is 1 lakh 50 thousand only. So, the percentage capacity used is 47.92 percent. The second is how many machines are required. So, if we can see just without calculation also our just by looking using common sense 1 lakh 15 thousand is the demand forecast and each machine can produce 1 lakh 20 thousand. So, and the percentage uh, capacity utilization is also less than 50 percent. So, we can say that 0 0.96 machines or approximately one machine can do the work for year one when we are making family sized bottles as per the demand. So, how much is the labor required? So, for operating one machine, three people are required. So, mathematically we can calculate the number of machines into the number of operators required per machine. So, we can see 2.88 is the number. So, three people are required to run the machine. So, if we see we are not properly utilizing the capacity that is available with us and then we can think that how this additional capacity the gap between the available capacity and the utilized capacity how we can make use of this gap so that we are able to map up the two things together as a operations manager or as a production manager our target is always to ensure the most optimal utilization of the resources at our disposal. So, that is only possible if we do these types of calculations and statistically or mathematically analyze that how much of our capacity we are utilizing. So, this type of analysis can be done. This is just a representative analysis shown for one year only. If we do these calculations, we can calculate for the all the four years that what is the percentage capacity used how many machines are required and how much labor force is required. So, if we see that most of the time our capacity percentage capacity used is less or approximately equal to the maximum utilization is 80 and 83 percentage here because the demand is maximum 240 and 200 here in the fourth year. So, prior to that for the first three years we are not able to utilize the capacity available with us and therefore, we can just use some creative thinking or innovative thinking to find out other uses, other usage of this capacity that is available with us. So, with this we conclude this week's discussion on production planning and control with an understanding that we have understood that what are the roles responsibilities of a production manager and what 
आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स दैट ही कैन यूज फॉर एंश्योरिंग स्मूथ प्रोडक्शन मीटिंग द ओवरऑल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ क्वान्टिटी क्वालिटी टाइम एंड कॉस्ट इन नेक्स्ट वीक वी विल स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन ऑन द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन अवर ओवरऑल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट थैंक यू